What is up, bros? Be Josh here. In today's video, we are doing a full review of the Tier 7 Royal Navy Destroyer, the Jervis. Now, there are currently only two ways you can get the Jervis, and that is with the normal Royal Navy containers that you get through the Royal Navy event, or from the ones you can purchase in the premium store. Eventually, this ship will become available like a normal tree line, but right now, the only two ways of getting it are those ways. However, throughout this entire video, we will be comparing it a lot to the Gajamada, which you have most likely already played, the Tier 7 Pan-Asian Destroyers, because these things are almost identical with a few different changes and a little bit of a different play style. Now, the Jervis is joining a tier that has a lot of really, really, really good ships. This is a fun-filled, packed Tier 7 Destroyer tier with a lot of my favorite ships like the Gajamada, the, Hi the Haida, um, even the Bliss, yes, I do love the Bliss, but even fan favorites like the Sims and the Leningrad, as well as a couple pretty solid destroyer ships and the Torpedo Heaven Shiratsuyu. So this is a pretty packed tier of a lot of different play styles and a lot of ships that are extremely good for their tier. However, the Jervis does somehow find a way to play a little bit different. Again, throughout this entire video, though, in this review, I will compare it to the Gaja because it is very, very similar to that ship, almost identical, and even the Haida has some similarities. But let's break down this ship first, and then we'll show some gameplay in the end. Now to break down the stats of this ship with a health pool of 16,750, you will be extremely competitive at this tier. That is going to be right there with the Gaja as well, health pool wise, and you're going to be right there in the middle ground for health pool. Now with a ship that you are going to be using your guns more than your torps as you are with the Jervis, uh, you are going to want that extra little bit of health. So survivability expert is what I have on this ship to get that value. It's going to be extremely nice to have that little extra buffer of just being able to do more damage with your guns because you have that bigger health pool to play around with. Main battery is going to be something you've seen and most likely played with before because it's the same exact setup as the Haida as well as the Gajamada. So, 5 second reload, 120 millimeters. It did not feel like I needed inertia fuse. The guns were doing plenty of damage and pending ships that I needed to do damage on. 8% fire chance, that's without any flags or demo expert. And with an 808 meter per second trajectory on both AP and HE. Now, this is the exact same thing as the Gaja and the Haida. So, if you have ever played those ships, one thing that I did notice and you do notice is that if at max range, it, they're kind of lofty. So you're going to tend to do most of your damage within that 10 kilometer range. So I felt like AFT isn't needed on this ship at all because once you get to that max range, about that 12, you're, it's going to be a tough time and your ships are going to be extremely, extremely lofty. Now, torpedoes on this ship uh, are going to be two sets of five with a two minute reload and a seven kilometer torp range. Now, these were more of a defensive torps, and you'll see that throughout this entire line that they're more of a defensive torp line, and you really are. This is a defensive destroyer line. That's how they're basically being advertised as. Now, it's a new type of play style, but your torps aren't going to be these aggro torps. Basically, what these torps are going to be used for is something relatively pushing into you, stuff like we've seen in low tier um, USN destroyers of stuff like the Farragut, which the Farragut has torps of 6.4 when its detection is 6.6. .6. So the times you will be using this ship is if something is in smoke or if something is pushing towards one of your caps or towards your location. That's when I found these, these things very useful because as you can see with this 6.3 kilometer detection by sea, seven kilometer torpedo range doesn't give you much room for, but much room for, uh, some work there. It does you a little bit, 59 uh, knots there is going to be okay. And with a torp hit of torp max damage of just under 16,000, they do hit plenty hard, but not really being able to do that, having to worry about radars and having to worry about getting basically danger close for these ships, they're going to be more defensive than offensive. AA is pretty minimal, so not really worth even really talking about it. Um, you're not going to be running any kind of troll uh, AA specs on these. Now, one thing about this ship is it is on the slower end of the spectrum, especially of the Tier 7 destroyers. You're going to be one of the slowest ones. There are some that are slower than you, but you are damn near at the bottom. Um, 36 knots. Now you're not extremely slow. You're not stuck in the water. But if a Russian destroyer wants to hunt you down, it's going to. So you have to be very aware of where you are when it comes to map placement and um, keeping map awareness at an all-time high because if you get locked out or stuck by a ship that is much faster than you, you're never going to get away. It just doesn't mathematically make sense. So being aware of where you are and hopefully using your smokes and your sonars and, and your defensive torps to hopefully push them away as well as your guns, um, you can hopefully take care of that. But that's just something to keep in mind. Again, that's without a speed flag and without that. So detectability by uh, by C, 6.3 kilometers. Now, 
the Gaja, what this thing is basically almost identical to, is 6.1, and then the Haida is the freakishly low 5.7. So these things are going to be much lower than this, but since you are a defensive destroyer, your detection is going to be a tad higher. You're kind of right there in the middle of detection when it comes to this. You're right there with stuff like the Akatsuki, but you're still stealthier than stuff like the Mahan and Sims, Minsk, and Leningrad. So you're kind of that weird in-between stage of like, I'm kind of a stealthy ship, but I'm not like this old kind of power crep <laughs> detection range. So you're still very competitive there, but going against something like the Gaja or something like the Haida, which this thing is very similar to, you are going to be a tad at a disadvantage, but again, we'll get to what this thing has up its sleeve. So 6.3, very in the middle of this tier for detection, but you have this thing called multiple, multiple smokes. Now, Pan-Asian destroyers are kind of the first line that we saw this rapid fire smokes of short durations and um, lots of. Now, these are those smokes basically on steroids. So when you look at the Pan-Asian smokes, this is too really fast. The Pan-Asian line is 30 second time on the consumable. So that's laying down smoke for 30 seconds and then uh, smoke screen dispersion in 70 seconds. So what you would end up doing is laying them down for um, a, sh a short amount of time and then staying them in a short amount of time, pumping out damage and then moving. Now the Royal Navy line is basically that smoke on steroids. So more charges still, action time of 10 seconds. Now, if you'd ever played the Royal Navy cruiser line, the smoke is gonna feel very similar to that in the duration of the action time where you're only gonna get about three, four puffs and then it's done. Now, I did see a lot of people that were playing this line not quite be ready for that. Apparently they were kind of used to normal destroyer smoke. So we haven't seen anything like this for a destroyer. So if you are spotted and you pop your smoke, be very aware to slam on those brakes ASAP or maybe even prepare for those because you can easily drift out of your smoke and be stuck with your pants down and maybe in a destroyer versus a destroyer fight. So only 10 seconds, you're only gonna get a few puffs out of your smoke and then it's down for only 40 seconds. So the play style of this is one, either using that to be defensive and get away from somebody or two, set up, do some damage, relocate, do some damage, relocate. You can use this offensively or defensively, even hide a teammate or two, but with lots of charges, short duration, that's gonna be your style of play. Now, Hydroacoustic Search, this is something that this line is going to use, and this is what makes them so defensive. Very short range of three kilometers. You're not gonna be like the German line, which has that five plus kilometers, whatever it is, um, but its action time is three minutes. So an extremely, extremely long sonar, and that's gonna, be, that's gonna help you spot torps, spot ships if they are in smoke. Although, about three kilometers, if you're going there, you're you're almost gonna be spotting them, If especially if it's a cruiser or a battleship, you're gonna definitely be spotting them before anyways from their detection and smoke, but you'll be able to spot destroyers by just a tad. But if you see, um, de uh, detectability after firing main guns and smoke, you only have about a 0.4 kilometer buffer before you're even detecting yourself. So you can use that hydroacoustic to, um, to be a bit offensive and push the smoke, but be very aware of your own detectability for after firing main bats. But something with 120 millimeters, if that Gaja is there, you're basically gonna be detecting him if he's firing anyway, but the Hydra will give you a tad of buffer. Again, it's more of a defensive thing where you will hold down an entire cap and be able to spot destroyers, spot, not so many destroyers, but spot torpedoes and help your team basically survive and be that defensive destroyer role. Now let's dive into some gameplay. We'll have some fun and show you kind of how this ship is played and kind of give you an idea of what to look forward to if you haven't gotten the Jervis yet. Now here you are in game with the Jervis and one thing you can see is that this ship gets going extremely fast. Now, that's something that we've seen with the Royal Navy cruisers. So if you've ever seen those, you know how fast they can get going, but they do take a little while to slow down. And that's something that you will see with the Jervis. One thing that's nice is it does help you start avoiding maybe some incoming shells or especially some extra torpedoes that you're trying to hold down. So that is one thing that's actually kind of nice. You get going very, very fast compared to other DDs. So potentially a way to catch somebody off guard, potentially a way to mind game somebody if they're sitting in smoke or around a corner, you can get going and then push them and maybe potentially use that Hydro to get a kill. So one thing that's a nice little tool you have is that pure acceleration of this class. We haven't really seen that with another line like this, with another line, a destroyer line like this. Now, 
we are heading into the cap and that's one thing that is going to become your home with this destroyer is holding down caps this is where you'll spend your entire life it seems like and um, when you do that and it's kind of a bummer as you'll see in this game when we do go from one end to the other because what you want to do is you want tons of people to kind of come into the cap that you are and basically make their lives hell using those quick smokes using that hydro and then using those torpedoes and as well as your guns so when as you see in this game we will basically get over here with my division and then almost the entirety of the other team will go to the other side so a bit of a bummer but that does show kind of some, some strengths and some weaknesses of this ship when uh, actually deciding to play through it so um as you see we are using radio location which is kind of nice because you don't really need inertia fuse now this is a luxury that we might not be able to use too much when going forward um uh using the kind of the higher tier stuff which kind of requires that now you can see here really inertia fuse isn't needed at all when even shooting at something like the Haida. So this is also one of the downsides of the ship is stuff like the Haida. And there's a couple of ships that will out detect you. Having that 6.3 is nice. It is relatively low, but when especially when you get up tiered, you are gonna have a tad of trouble. It's not anything crazy. Um but you are gonna get out detected by Bensons that have let's say 5.8 and other ships that are much lower than you even going against Gero that's gonna outspot you by almost a kilometer. So again, radio location is definitely nice to maybe break down that barrier and get you a bit of a head start compared to other destroyers. Now the Haida is going to play this correctly, uh, use his sonar since we have ours, but ours is going to last a tad longer so we get to keep rolling. Um, so one thing we're going to do though is push right back into cap and then just start working on that. Now one thing that is also nice is uh, we have longer hydro compared to his. Also one down thing I don't think you guys noticed was this takes a little while to get used to. Um, is that you do have those turrets that can basically rotate any way around the ship. So, but downside is um, they don't have to rotate all around. Oh, that's the upside is they don't have to go all the way around to get back to it. Downside is that they will still show up as a green target, which I wish it wouldn't. And um, as you can see going forward, really only two of my, one of my turrets could actually shoot perfectly forward, um, but it still shows up as green. So a bit of a downside uh there as well but still your guns are going to hit extremely hard and that's that's actually really really nice but since they are uh basically what they call like 360 degree turrets uh they will move around but if they are blocked they still show up as green and so sometimes when you're going at an angle maybe not paying attention then uh you can get into a situation where only two of your turrets are kind of shooting and firing on somebody when you really want all your turrets to fire on and it looks like they all will. That's kind of a, just a small little, I guess, thing that uh, kind of bugged me whenever I played this line. Like right here, my front turret can't actually get on him even though it kind of shows up as green. So I'm only getting two turrets on. Again, that's really just a quality of life thing that just annoyed me. And yes, I know that this Farragut is outplaying me right now and I should probably just pop smoke. But um, I want to get that extra kill. And as you can see, these are literally the only three ships that are on this side of the map. So a bit of a downside. We sank that other kill on the, on the Atlanta. And it's really time to start moving. Because uh, with only having a fair good over here, yeah, it's time It's time to get going. We got our cap, but there's no damage over here. And what do we want to do? We want to be doing damage in the ship and helping the team out in the ship. And help the team out if there's nothing on this side. But overall... Again, you're going to be you're going to be playing this ship and seeing play styles that you have seen before. What I mean by that, stuff like the Gaja. If you've already played that line, that's a great kind of show of what's that thing that the Gaja has is it has deep water torps that says normal torps, Gaja has eight kilometer torps that are deep water. This has seven that are not. So, um, you know, pluses and minus there, but. Honestly, it's really nice to have torps that can hit destroyers, especially in any kind of uh, uh, kind of a, a knife fight battle. You're going to have that bit of an advantage, but still extremely, extremely similar. So we're, this is another downside too, of being on the kind of lower side, lower speed of the DD, uh, DD uh, lines here. You are, if you are out of position, it's going to take you a tad longer to get this. Let's say if I was like the Leningrad or the Minsk or something like that, it's extremely fast. We're going almost 10, 10 uh, knots faster than this ship. So overall, um, I, that's, I guess, one of the other weak sides. I'm trying to, like, there really isn't much of a weak side, it seems like this to me. You know, I'm kind of going, oh, it's kind of slow, but not really. And, the okay, well, the, gun, the turrets are overall, they kind of get annoying because you can't shoot them all at one time. But the thing is that they go all the way around. They're super nice. You can be super aggressive with them. So, I... 
this is just the overall good ship, and I really like this ship. And there really isn't much of a weakness. I guess I wish their torps were a tad longer, but if they were, if they were, it'd probably be way overpowered. If their, uh, you know, if the concealment was lower, that'd be nice and it'd be a good thing. But overall, it'd probably be overpowered. So, you know, that's one thing that working means wanting with this is having these tools and having this uh, new playstyle of this quote unquote defensive destroyer. They don't want that detection and that to be super, super low, because if it is, then they're going to have much, uh, you know, way too big of an, of an offensive chance against other ships that are a bit more, let's say, an offensive play style, stuff like that. So anyways, though, one thing we do have is we have a nice cyclone coming, which this ship actually does pretty damn well. And so having seven kilometers on uh, seven kilometer torps in an eight kilometer cyclone, that's going to be really good. And with certain situations of having the smoke honestly we just have to beat out one shot from any of these ships and if we do that then we can just smoke up and basically keep them spotted through that so that's pretty nice and two we can keep pushing this destroyer and get us that advantage of killing him this is going to be a pretty good destroyer hunting line but hunting as in the way that you're basically trapping them but say almost like a i don't know basically setting up a, a surprise attack on a, on a destroyer is, is the best way of explaining it hunting them that way so capitalizing on destroyer mistakes making them get into a situation where they are going to be at a disadvantage and you can use your tools your tricks to really take them out and give your uh, team the, the the advantage so as you see right here we've killed three so far they've killed two um destroyers so we instantly have that uh, that advantage and have that map control and we can kind of just go to town here too and their last destroyer is a is the gauger so there we go so i don't have to worry about torps so i'm just going to push right into this guy and not really worry about too much and boom, we have all of our turrets on on uh, on target. And with the same kind of armor, him shooting AP, he's just gonna do that. And we'll just shred him with our HE and not really have to worry about anything. So there we go. A nice, I mean, 2300 salvos. Again, you don't need inertia fuse, so you can get a little nice uh, with that radio location if you want to use that to give you just a heads up there as well um, on that captive build. So, and one thing too, using the eight kilometer fire chance, setting a fire on one ship setting a fire on one ship that's what you want to do so this is the situation where you're going to be extremely strong and what it's when ships are pushing towards your cap but as you can see uh the smoke duration is already in the red it's already going to last a little bit of countdown so getting into a spot moving, getting into a spot moving now i am running superintendent on this captain and really i don't feel like it's quite needed um you're going to be down to six smokes instead of seven or whatever i have so superintendent really isn't needed but i do like superintendent for the extra hydro i would use that because you're going to be running it basically all the time so not so much for the smokes but more for the hydro but here we go though still pushing in against these battleships not much you can do but using those guns and our torps to really get into a spot where we can really start pumping out some damage on these guys as well as our, our smoke already being back up now this is the perfect spot right here see how this king george is pushing into me and this and this fubuki basically not even knowing uh, i was there so a bit of a bummer i wanted to launch my second set of torps here but um our little fubuki but buddy right here i uh, didn't want to team torp him and uh, he wanted to get detected and go launch his torps so probably some missed damage here but i'm not just gonna set up and and torp my own uh, friendly target although i probably could have got some decent damage probably with a kill on that king george but uh, we'll take the flood at least, and uh, we'll be a good teammate and, and not go pink, at least in the, the video I want to do the review on. But this, Wubuki did a fantastic job at blocking all the damage, which was a uh, shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to, uh, to him, but uh, still. And now we get into that spot where we're going to be a little awkward on range, and um, but still, he's going to get some big damage on that, and we can then start forcing that down. So as you can see right here too, with how the smoke works, Pretty much once you get kind of set up you only get a few puffs and that's something we've seen again on the so i'm seeing a lot of other dds a lot of the even the lower tiers drifting out of their smoke so be very conscious of one how fast you're going to um have you slow down enough this is something that you're going to basically need to slow down as fast as possible and uh and, and stop in that smoke but Okay, we're gonna get that King George anyway. Down he goes, so that's some nice damage. And still, we're putting this team into a situation where they have to push us. That guy just took Torp, so there's no way he has that. But this is the perfect, this is this is what you want. This is how you will excel on this ship. This is exactly how 
you want all situations to be when playing the Jervis. Taking control of the map, using using your setup here, and really just putting the team where they have to push, and then they basically you can start using that. And you, you can see we're going to switch up to AP as well. And the AP is even solid. The HE damage is good. We saw a 2800 salvo there. I was seeing maybe if we get 3100 right there. I was seeing maybe we get some citadels on this guy. But uh, um, really, I, I've always just liked these guns, the 120s. I feel like they do a great job when it comes to doing damage. And um, there we go. just missed the Kraken right there. But still, overall, a really, really fun ship. And um, still something that is extremely fun to play. And if you have played it or have unlocked it, really, really enjoy it. So a nice little game overall there. Four kills, a tons of flags and credits. We were doing it for the Royal Navy event. But um, really take, being able to take out a bunch of ships and using both the guns and the torpedoes to be very, very effective. But really capping the caps and defending caps. Those are going to be where this thing kind of excels and really just kind of works towards it. You know, four kills at the top. Almost had the Kraken right at the end. Um, but still just an extremely fun ship. So my captain skills for the Jervis that I am running right now, and as I was talking about a couple of them, I use Superintendent, uh, Survivability Expert, and Radiolocation. But this is a pretty basic destroyer build that I'm running right now. Priority target is fantastic, especially so you can know how many targets are focusing you and either avoid damage or get some extra information. Uh, last in is for sure, uh, picking up Survivability first, and then Concealment Expert. At 14, I really like Radiolocation, grabbing that. 17 right here, uh, Superintendent. Not so much getting the extra smoke, but getting the extra sonar. And then Adrenaline Rush is just a cherry on top for any build. Um, now with stuff like the Gallant and other trainers in this line, you can get hopefully a nice little high point captain. At least maybe set up a good little basic build. Now, of course, this is just my play style. If you want faster torps, you can go for that. If you're a fan of BFT, you can drop some stuff for BFT. Or if you feel like relocation isn't really your, your play style, you can go for that. I feel like AFT just isn't worth it. With, with the shells that are very lofty, I feel like you won't really get much use out of that extra range other than basically stationary battleships or stationary targets. So overall, I would use something that's a bit more effective. Now for modules, this is what I'm going to be running. Um, I would run the aim, uh, main armament mod 1, the propulsion, because we don't want those to get knocked out. Even though we use last stand, the less propulsion gets knocked out, the better. And aiming system for the better guns. We're not going to be running anything like the AA range because your AA is just so low anyway. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, the steering gears right here. Now, um, of course, you can't even use the propulsion because it's basically already built into the into the ship. So overall, the Jervis is a fantastic little destroyer. Again, um, the only way of getting the destroyer is through the two types of containers. And since you have made it to the end of the video, which I appreciate all of you hanging out that have made it, um, I will be giving out two codes. So I will draw two names tomorrow. Um, all you have to do is just like the video and leave a comment down below. You know, if you just want to leave the name of the ship, Jervis or whatever. So like the video, leave a comment. I'll draw two names. Both of you will be getting codes that will give you a few of the containers from the premium shop, which not only give you some extra flags and extra of the currency for the Royal Navy event, but you also have a higher chance of getting the Royal Navy destroyers uh, from those actual ones. So you can play them a little bit early and have some fun and maybe even get the Jervis itself. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of the tier seven Royal Navy destroyers. Again, all you have to do is like and comment the video and you are entered into a chance to win. I'll try all both of these names tomorrow and you will, I will announce them on Twitter and hopefully get you guys out to them ASAP. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember like subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.